And what do you think? What is the most interesting thing you're doing right now? I think the most the most interesting thing is fashioning our history. The whole concept, the main concept um, that was that we would make a dress out of like a paper like fabric that the community would illustrate their emotions and knowledge on. But it's kind of shifted now because obviously like all my workshops have to happen online. Um, so now what's basically happening is, is there's like a free program. We've got 28 people signed up and um, they're basically, we'll do a series of workshops online they will quit create work they will send it in and then it will be included in our exhibition at the library but also put into the brent museum and archives and then we as a team will will take inspiration from their work and we will illustrate the dress ourselves now which is a shame because my idea was that everyone would just kind of pitch in and go wild but now obviously See, we're just going to have to like reinterpret that information and use our creativity to illustrate this dress but actually I feel like as the project's gone forward like it's so much more than just this dress like to like support like 28 young people aged 12 to 22 at this really difficult time has been so like important and rewarding and obviously I'm only 23 so you know I think it's really humbling that like I'm showing them that like it, you don't have to be this like 40 year old fashion designer who's yeah. popped off like you know um and I think there is a myth about that with fashion that like if you don't get signed and if you don't go into the stratosphere as soon as you've done your graduate collection then you're a nobody and I just feel like that's mm. not true basically like um so yeah I think that's really important and then obviously as well like I have really been um, very heavily involved with working with the museum and archives over the last few years so you know um I, I the first time I properly worked with archives was in my dissertation I worked with the VNA cloth workers um and the National Portrait Gallery Heinz Library um for my research and with AVP Autograph in Shoreditch as well um with the Black Chronicles archive and exhibitions and then it's just kind of led on to me working with Helen Story and then the Joan Charney textile archive and special collections of Manchester School of Art and then obviously now um more recently working with Brent Museum and Archives but also with the Museum of Youth Culture, which is another funded um, Brent Culture Fund project, which has again been really fun because I've been like reflecting on my youth, sending them loads of pictures. I've been doing interviews with like my family members, um, like talking about like how I used to go like squat raving and meet Tumblr meetups and stuff. So like that was really fun. And I don't really, I, as we said earlier, like, I don't really have anything to hide when it comes to that. Like. I loved my time doing that and it was really enjoyable um, and I think it made me who I am so I was really excited to be like reflecting on that especially during this time you know it's been really fun so yeah I guess that's like the main that's like the main kind of pitch of fashioning our history really and like what's going on but there, it's a lot it's there's been a it's been a long journey like you know I mean I, pl I applied for the funding like literally this time last year and the project was only meant to last for a few months and like now it's like next month it'll be a year old and by the time it finishes it'll be like probably a year and a half old so it's it has been a really long journey um but yeah that's kind of like the main thing yeah I really like the idea about that, helping the 12 to 22 year old, because that's like the key part of your life that you're always going to remember. Yeah, but not only that, I feel like it was such an important part where like you just like, not that you decide what you want to do necessarily, but like it's when like, you know, enriching like a young person at that time could really yeah. impact them later on. Like, and obviously I, the, the, the fashioning our history is based on that like, other extracurricular stuff that I did myself. Sorry, let me just get a bit comfy. Um, but like I, when I was at um, uh, sixth form, I was really lucky cause I'm from like a working class, like, like family, like low income. So, you know, none of them had ever really worked in the industry. Like my mum like studied fashion at college, which you can speak to her about a bit. Um, and my dad's like a, a, a very well trained carpenter who works for um transport for london um but um well it's not quite transport for london but obviously they work for them so um but yeah so that like, my parents are creative in their own way but they they're not like creative industry people so they didn't have contacts or like people just to be like oh you know mummy and daddy can sort you out kind of stuff you know even now i'm having to to do all this whole project and make my work in my tiny room and kitchen which is super really not ideal um but I think it's all about just like showing people that like it really doesn't matter like if that's the case you know like you can still be successful like I'm so proud of what I've achieved with this project literally just from my house you know um so yeah but I think it's also just that as I said like 
the extracurricular stuff I did, I did it at the Royal Academy, Media Trap Programme, and, and as I mentioned, ABP Autograph, the album project with Central St Martins. Like, I was given those opportunities because my teachers saw that I was working really hard and that I didn't necessarily have the connections, like maybe some other kids in the class. So, you know, I, I know how important that was for me. Um, and so to give that to, like, the thing is, I wouldn't say other young people, but like it's people like me. Do you know what I mean? Like that are like not even like are not a dissimilar age than me. You know, as I said, I'm only 23. Like, um, and I think that will really make it like unpretentious as well. I think that will just make it like I think that will really. I hope that like me being a similar age will like bring out the personality a little bit. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I agree really. Yeah. So, what kind of projects do they submit to you? So basically, um, the way it works is that there's a series of workshops during the half term. So I'm going to be leading like three of them. Um, and um, they kind of like the ones that I'll be doing that just kind of takes them from research to design. So the first workshops about mood boards and and sketchbooks and how you can use those to generate like data and how you then reflect on that. And then the next workshops, like how you use that to then start to inform your own work and your own practice, um, because for me, beg your pardon, I think one of the hardest like things for me is like when you've done like so, so much research and then you have to start doing your own stuff like that's like quite a that can be quite a difficult jump um, that I even I find difficult now. Um, and then obviously the last workshop, which is um, the week after on the Saturday, um, it's literally like an open workshop where like we basically are just going to stay on Zoom for the day and then people are just going to make it work. We can talk, we can have little crits, like they can show us what they're doing. Um, and it's kind of like just giving them free reign to just be creative, like and us to be present together because obviously our intention was that everyone was going to illustrate this dress and now that can't happen so I still want everyone to like be together but then we've also got some other free workshops which is like so amazing that we've had these come up so Esperance and Cotalile, Cotalou, I can't pronounce their name, it's quite complicated but um, they're, they're like a duo team that have their own fashion company um, and they're going to be doing like a fabric applique workshop. I really need to practice how to say their names because I still haven't <laughs> uh, still pronounced it yet. Um, it, I, 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 I kind of feel like they should think about their name a bit though because it is really yeah. hard to. I was talking to them about this. It's really hard. To, they're only they're only a new company. It's really hard to pronounce. Like, um, but anyway, yeah, they're doing a fabric applique workshop, which is super cool. And then we have Capta, the off cut company, who's worked with like Liberties and Christopher Farcloth. Um, they're going to do like a sustainability chat and then we've got um, Elise Blackshaw she is a um, currently um, an MA student at the RCA and she's doing a text in fashion workshop really creative and then we've got Sue Dre who's a fashion illustrator who um, works with LCF and she's done so many like fashion weeks and things like that as well she's quite well known um, she will be doing like free workshops for our participants but also for the general public so um, that's the kind of work they'll be doing. And then they will send it all over to us either digitally by post or they can drop it off of their local. And then we, I'm working with myself, my mother, Rosalind Smith Riley, um, Nicola Cummings, our garment technologist, and Ashley um, Kent, um, my uh, exhibition curator. And then we'll basically be like working to kind of like illustrate the dress that Nicola's been um, working on and then the, the other work will then kind of feed into the exhibition or it will just go into the archive itself um so yeah that's kind of what they'll be up to yeah so does so you know the name fashioning our history what does where did the name come from I think the fact it just came from like the, my dissertation really and just the kind of idea that like um, I'm obviously not an academic, like I'm not a fashion historian or historian. Like every, I, I'm, I, I've always been very interested in history, but at school, I was always never like, you must learn this. I was always just like, no, I'm just wanna like learn my own stuff. Especially because I feel like the curriculum is just not really like yeah. inclusive at times. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, especially with like black history, that like, obviously like that's like really like coming forward now. But like when I was at school, it was like, yeah, we have Black History Month for one month and then they don't you don't hear about it for the rest of the year. So it was just a bit like for me, I think it was just all from like meditation and like me like fashioning my own history by studying through a different perspective, if that makes sense. But also like instead of like looking forward at the past as well, like obviously like fashioning our history like for the future. 
like we can like, you know obviously this is all going into the archive and this will be like the most contemporary fashion archive of work like collection of work so it's like got a, a few different dimensional meanings if that makes sense yeah, I, I understand it more now i thought when i first heard about it, i thought it was just literally like his like what his old people used to wear like you know what i mean like what the kids yeah. used to wear but i understand that it's more like making your own history yeah it's i mean don't get me wrong like i'm definitely inspired by historical references yeah. and like it's always so something that, I, I think that i'm thinking about i think they actually wore some pretty, pretty cool stuff so yeah how do you feel um as a creative person in brent how do you think brent relates to who you are as a person well i mean it's it, it's interesting because um like oh to be brutally be honest with you like I've not really had the best time in Brent growing up like it's not really like don't get me wrong like, I, I do love Brent like I think Brent is like such a culturally diverse borough and there's so much like tradition and culture that you can see when you're just walking through the street and there's such a like diverse like range of people however like I think like by it being so diverse it can also cause like misconceptions in certain communities if you see what I mean so obviously like I, I feel that I'm, I've always been a very creative flamboyant person um, and obviously like later on I realized that I was gay so it's just not really like it was it, I just it was just nothing that I, it was never really something that I felt comfortable with being from here like I always felt incredibly outcast like um because I was interested in different stuff like because I wasn't like a boy chilling on road like on the block like or I wasn't interested in trap or rap music or like you know I I just wasn't I I didn't I, I never really like spoke like everyone around here as well like don't get me wrong obviously I picked up the slang at school but like I was always very well spoken and people just didn't really know where I came from I didn't know where I came from because like, my family's quite cockney like you know which is quite funny um my mum especially my mum and my grandmother they are so cockney like and I am very well spoken and everyone's just like where have you come from don't get me wrong when I've had a few drinks like I can definitely go into it but like you know but yeah like I'm generally very well spoken and I've always like yeah I always felt very outcast and outsider here to be honest and especially living on the estate I live on like that really caused like a lot of anxiety for me because I, I feel like like I, Obviously, I used to like try and hide the way I dressed, like by like putting coats on or like layering up. Whereas now, I just don't really care, and like I'll just walk out. And I, I like to give you some to give you some like like understanding of that. Like it's so difficult when you know you're the odd one out, and on either side of your road, you've got like huge groups of people, potentially gangs, like hanging out on either end of your road. It can just be really like like you can just be like the walls are closing on you a little bit do you know what I mean um and that just really wasn't good for my mental health and like a lot of the, that contributed as well as personal stuff that was going on at the time contributed why I just went out of London for my degree because I just need to get out um and yeah like growing up like especially Church Road like we've just had such a bad rep like you know like it's we've been on the news like so much for, like gangs and like some kids like only a few months ago got shot in the head like round the corner from me like and like stuff like that is just not like like I guess like this is more Church Road maybe than Brent generally but like obviously this is where I've grown up um so like yeah I I think for me like it was never really somewhere like I'd want to be um but now I think that like doing this project though which I really really um, have enjoyed is that it's allowed me to really change my perspective on that a little bit and especially like maybe understanding a bit why that these kids are hanging out on the end of my road like it's clear that like they have nothing better else to do and there's nowhere for them to go and um, I'm sure a lot of it is a choice but I think generally it's just because that they're not enriched and they've never been given the opportunity um so like I, I guess now instead of feeling scared or angry about it I just feel a bit sorry for them like and I'd like to see that changed a bit um but I think also like a lot of their attitudes, like especially the people around here, they're just really, really narrow minded. And, and yeah. I think that it would be really nice to open their perspectives on, on things like that. Um, but yeah, I think doing the project like Fashioning Our History is definitely, is definitely like helped me to um, 
form a new opinion and make new connections and feel a bit more comfortable that like what I'm doing is worthwhile, is respected people here are interested in it um, and that I'm being listened to because for a long time I really didn't feel like I was being listened to and I just felt like I was just being on purposely singled out basically. So I think that's like my experience generally, um, but I don't want that to like, I don't, I don't want this to like form more stereotypes of Brent and people in Brent. Like it's just my experience. And I like can see that through London Borough of Culture, like with all the investment that's being made um, and like obviously the, 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 pro, the progress I'm making with the project, like I'm just hoping that like we're gonna, we, we'll move forward with that, you know? What do you think needs to change in Brent to make it feel a bit, to make people like how you felt a bit better? What, what would have made you feel better? If, what would be, like, what, if anything could be different, what would you want to be different? I just, I just do feel that there's like an unspoken homophobia generally, like in the area that I live in. Like I do, I do feel that, like, do you know what I mean? Um, I just, I, I like the thing is, it's really difficult though, because I think with some people it's just ingrained in their culture and like, I, I'm, I'm like, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't go, I don't want to like be like, it's within black culture, like, because I don't think that's necessarily true, but I think it is quite common, like that you do find that like black um, families and Asian families um, are not forthcoming with things like that. Um, and obviously like the area that I live in is very BAME, it's a very like, diverse community of those people that have really like set themselves up here as well like obviously like Windrush generation like it's so amazing that you can walk down the street and people have their own businesses and their shops and you hear reggae music and you know I, I'm not disputing that at all but I almost just feel that like if there's anyone that's other that comes into that that then like they are made to feel like they are the other other and I, I, I me as a mixed race person find that really hard to deal with because it's like where do I fit in do you know what I mean like you know I'm part of this community as well why am I being made to feel like I'm not um so I guess that would be great to kind of like maybe explore that a little bit and find out why that is the case and try and break that stigma and break that a bit um but also, I just don't really feel like as growing up as a gay person, like I just I never really saw anything gay. Like I never saw anything that was like a Brent pride or, you know, like I guess maybe in sixth form I found out there was an LGBT foundation. But that was really just said in passing. And like I never really knew many other gay people like at school or at least I didn't really like know they were gay because like I actually found out some people are gay now and I'm like. <laughs> but like um but yeah I just feel like they're, they're, I don't feel for like Brent does enough to kind of like tell the LGBT narrative to yeah. be quite honest with you um I would really like to see that change because I I definitely definitely felt like an outsider and it definitely affected my mental health a hundred percent like not knowing that like where to turn and where like people were going and you, you know that was tough and I just don't feel like there was enough being done really at the time but I guess hopefully as we're moving forward now that will help but like yeah I guess me as a young person and even still now I don't feel there's enough do you know what I mean yeah so yeah yeah that's interesting to hear though that that's going on I think you never really hear about like especially say if you're not gay and, and if I was living in Brent you wouldn't understand that someone who who is would feel like that until so, they've actually spoke about their experience yeah and then don't get me don't get me wrong though like I'm sure there are some people that live in Brent that have been voguing since day one and are yeah. happy to be free in that and feel comfortable where they live you know I'm not saying the whole of Brent is homophobic I'm yeah. just saying my experience where I have lived in Brent has been generally that um so yeah I think that um yeah as I said so I don't want to create more stereotypes. I'm just, you know, explaining my my position. Um, but yeah, I I definitely, yeah, I just I definitely would like to see more more um, done in regards yeah. to that. It, that's what everyone's experience is important. And if you felt that way, then there might be someone else who could feel that way. That's why it's yeah. Important. It's it's quite it's quite it's quite interesting as well because obviously there's this whole thing al alongside like um, racism and homophobia. And it's difficult for me because again, where do I sit with this? Like, I'm mixed race, I'm from a Caribbean heritage, like, but I'm gay. And so like some people see the racism as like, you know, it's like the worst thing, you know, it's like, we should all be focusing on that. 
Actually, I, I personally, for me, and this will cause so much controversy, I'm quite sure, but I think homophobia is just as bad as, as racism. I think it's equally as damaging. I think it's equally as, as, as you know, um, uh, detrimental to society and people. And I just, I just don't see why we should be ex putting them on two different levels. I think they're both equally disgusting. Um, and that, I think that is also a problem. Um, and again, for someone like me that like identifies with BAME community, black community, but then is also gay and wants to like express that, it's just a bit like, where do you sit? Because it, you, it's so weird that like, you could like, we, like we've got carnival for example Notting Hill carnival that's all to celebrate like you know the black presence in the UK and blah blah but like there's people that are gay that are there that get abused while they're trying to explore that experience and they are the community why why are they experiencing that you know and it's just there's just this kind of like back and forth which I just think needs to stop like it's like you know gay people the gay people that like are racist like the fact that we have to have a black pride why is that the case do you know what I mean it's it's wrong like as far as i'm concerned not that not that black pride is wrong it's just wrong that it has to be a thing like yeah. it, we should all just be able to celebrate together you know yeah i know what you mean discrimination is discrimination at the end of the day exactly yeah i think obviously racism has just such a it's a, it has such a visual history which i think that like is so um uh disgusting and uh, disturbing but yeah. the thing is it's like through my study gay people have been like you know they have been, they have experienced um similar oppression i mean it's difficult isn't it because obviously enslavement is is what, what really like ties the the um controversy around racism a lot more but i just think if you if you if you look into history like gay people people were burned, they were hanged, like they were abused, they had their businesses taken from them, they were like outcast from society. And I just feel that, that there's definitely a link here, like just, I, I'm, and I'm sure you'll probably find that many slaves were probably gay as well. Like, you know, if you really did some, some research into it, um, you know, I think that, yeah, I just think that we need to really open it up a little bit and just stop the back and forth, I think for me. Just approach it as in it's discrimination and don't. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So how do you feel about, you said you're 23, how do you feel about where you're at with your age and where you want to go? Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Well, it, it's it's quite con uh, yeah it's quite complicated because obviously like you know in terms of like fashion like some people are just born and they know that's what they want to do but I think that these experiences especially growing up here really like delayed my want of expressing my love of that and um, like even at school like, I remember like when I was choosing my GCSEs I could have chosen textiles then but I was like I, I don't want to choose that because people it's gonna it's just gonna reinforce that I'm gay and everyone will find out kind of thing so I ended up doing graphics instead I think that was a mistake like. I I, I mean, like, I would have loved to have done textiles. I'm happy to graphics because I'm very good with like Photoshop and, and 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 the kind of like graphic side of art and direction and things like that. Um, not in terms of a commercial sense, but just a creative sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the same breath, like, I just I just like really wish I did that earlier. But I met everyone has their own journey, so you know, I don't regret anything. But like, I definitely, if I could go back and change it, I probably would. Um, but I guess like obviously that experience, like not like not wanting to live up stereotypes, like delayed my like expression of what I wanted to do. So when I was at Kingston, which was um, quite a difficult time for me, just because it was su such a um, yeah, it was just such a weird environment at the time, really. Um, and um, yeah, obviously I ended up doing textiles, but like I think halfway through my degree, I just always clocked that like, I just always wanted to, to 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 do fashion and be in fashion. But then that there was a problem there because I am I'm not very technically skilled when it comes to sewing and pattern cutting. So at the moment, like I feel like my creativity and like my concept building and research is like I love it. Like it's absolutely what I love doing. But I think moving forward, I would really like to learn more about technical skill in making clothes, like pattern cutting. And I, I would really like to learn more about that going forward. Um, so my kind of plan in the next five years is to do more of that, to, to learn a bit more about technical skills, like maybe do a short course um, with pattern cutting or tailoring. Um, and I, I would love to do a master's in fashion if I could. Um, I, I, I don't really, I, I don't like saying that I'd, I'd like a brand. I, I would like a creative studio, which like isn't necessarily just a fashion 
studio, but fashion is involved within that. Um, social change, applied art, um, and just really just using these mediums to just bring forward these 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 narratives and concepts, really. Do you have like any like specific goals that you want to achieve by the end of the five years? See, it's difficult because I really want to do a master's, but I don't know if I will do that in the next five years, especially yeah. with the way the education system is now. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not willing to part my money. Um, and I mean, I don't really have much anyway, but like, you know, uh, and the master's, you really don't get much of a loan. I mean, I could probably maybe apply for some bursaries and grants maybe, but yeah, um, I'm not really in the position to do that. And I, I, and after speaking to other people that I've done masters as well, like I've been speaking to a designer called Rose Danford Phillips, who um, she did textiles originally, and then she jumped straight to a fashion MA. And she said that was so difficult. Like she, she wished that she had time to really like learn more about the pattern kind. And she's fine now, like her collections are beautiful, but like, I, I guess like talking to other people that, I, that went straight into MAs, it kind of made me think maybe I just need to get a bit more experience. Um, especially because I'm not like, technically that adverse um I guess what I'd like to achieve is that like I would like would love to be on a better skilled level of making garments um by that period um and I would like I guess what's really hard is because obviously I left London so a lot of people that have like been able to stay in London have set up a network and set up like you know people know who they are and and, and they've got their friends here it's really tough for me because I, I made a decision to leave so it's almost like when I came back it was like starting from scratch so I think I guess in the next five years I'd love to really build a strong network of friends that are creative that like we could like collaborate or I could like help them with what they're doing they can help me with what they're doing we go clubbing we do club nights like you know um and it's like a kind of collective of people I'd love to I'd love to really establish that in the next five years I feel like I'm definitely starting to do that though which is really enjoyable and really nice but yeah I'd like to kind of move out of home and find a space like in London where I feel that like I've got my people and I'm making my art and making my fashion and I'm really enjoying that I think that's a goal for the next five years um and yeah, just as I said, just to set myself up a little bit more and to become a bit more established, I think is is the goal. And and just to be taken a bit more seriously and, and people buy my work and pay pay for what I'm doing. Because, you know, I guess like I've just done a coffee morning talk with um, Brent li Libraries and, um, you know, hopefully it will lead on some pay paid work and I'd like to start being paid for what I'm doing you know I've done four four free unpaid internships which don't get me wrong have been fascinating and I've learned so much and I'm very thankful for the experience but I'm just sick of working for free do you know what I mean like I know I I know I'm talented I know I've I've, I've done what it takes to show that I'm a hard-working individual especially this this mayor of London project like you know I'm literally doing the whole thing I'm the creative producing I'm doing social media I'm doing interviews I'm like having to do admin I'm a courier like I'm packing packages you know like I've done the whole thing and I've had help but generally I've done the whole thing and that's been really difficult so I hope that really shows potential employers later on that like I've got what it takes basically um I do kind of always ultimately see myself working for myself but I I would really like to get a bit more experience working for other people before that happens so on a final note, what, what what advice would you give to other creative people in Brent? Um, I just I just feel that like just have something you're passionate about and go with that and don't and try to just feel that if you're experiencing any oppression or anything that like is like limiting you, like just try try and at least think that later on you'll be in a position where that will not be the case because getting that into that rut where you feel like there's no way out is just so damaging and like obviously like as I said my mental health was really affected by that and I would really like for people to not feel like that and to find a community and a space or like just like or in even like the the kind of willpower in yourself to just never give up and keep going but also I think it's just a bit like stop stop living up to stereotypes and stop giving people a reason to kind of presume things about you that are not true uh, and and just to choose just to throw yourself in your work but also throw yourself into people and collaborate and be open I think that's really important is to be open um and just kind of 
yeah, just just kind of like do your own thing and not really worry about what what anyone else has got to say about that because I I like I know now that if I could go back and make different decisions, I would have. And I was a bit like I wouldn't say I was a coward, but like I would I would just wish I had the confidence just just be like I don't care, I'm going to do it because I think that has limited certain skills that I potentially could have made earlier on. So I just really want to encourage people not to do that, and you know ultimately it's your life at the end of the day you know um and I just feel like you know, with Brent and everything like obviously I've t- spoken about some ne- negative experiences but it's such a fascinating place the people are so inspiring we've got so much positive things to talk about and I'm just sick of the news talking about the negative or the media talking about the negative like let's talk about the positive like let's encourage more positivity and hopefully the negatives will stop happening and people will find things to enrich themselves with and take part in basically yeah. it's just about opening your eyes to it really and that's what i want to hopefully be able to do with everything i'm doing is like i really want to focus on the creative people um in all aspects and just kind of help the other creative people that can maybe watch this and feel motivated or maybe learn something yeah and i think that's what i mean that's like you know i mean i don't want to say this like as in as in i'm some big artist or anything but you know, if I get into, you know, where a position which I want to be, like, you know, and even doing this project now, I almost feel like that's the start of that. Like, you have a responsibility to support other creative people. Like, that is, that's what you do, what you do. When you choose this as a career and you choose this as a way of life, and this is the thing with me, that like people think I'm a nutcase because I don't stop. But it's my life. I love it. Like, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. And, like, I had this at uni with a few people, you know, I mean, a few people would be like, when are you going to clock? You're just like everyone else. Like, when are you going to realise, you you know, when are you going to realise that, like, your dreams are just not going to come true? Like, this big dream is it's just it's just a dream like I'm like you have not lived my life like are you you've not experienced you've not experienced the things that give me motivation like you, you've not lived in the place that you know and that's the thing that like, the negatives have been positives for me because I've been like well you know what I'm going to sh- prove these people wrong I'm going to show them that I, I am something so you know I am someone that is important and that I don't deserve to be treated in this manner and I deserve to be lived listen to you know so I think that that's that that's um like having the like those people say things like that or and and I don't think they I don't think they mean it with any malice by the way like I don't I think it is like something that like is said in passing and they don't really feel like how like damaging that is but in the same breath it's just a bit like this is my life I I will do this till I die like do you know what I mean like and I um I like this is just the life that I that I want to live and I'm really really passionate about that you know yeah, and I think it's understanding there's not, or like, everyone always says to me, not everyone's going to agree with what you want to do, or not everyone's going to yeah. do what you want to do, not everyone's going to support you, there's always yeah. people that aren't, as you are with, probably with other people, there's probably people that you see, other creative people that you don't agree with everything they're doing, and Yeah, a way of, like, still doing it for yourself and doing it because yeah. you know, I think that's what's important as well. I think as well, because obviously, like, you know, obviously, as I said, I've struggled with a few mental health issues in the past, but, like, I am such an open person and I am obviously I, I I'm I'm quite a confident person generally. Um and I'm I'm happy to talk about my about myself and what I'm doing. And but I what I really hope to do through this professional history project as well is to just use my voice to give others theirs. I think that's really important. And uh because I know that like not everyone's like me and they'll, you know, they won't be able to just talk like I can, but I just hope that like I can like use my voice to shine a light on other people as well and uh, even like working with my mother who you'll speak to later on like that's an example how that's happened like my mum did fashion at college she never was able to really pursue what she wanted to do because um there was just no she was just not there was it was just not something that was supported at that time for her she didn't have financial backing she wasn't pushed in the right direction um and then she ended up having my brother my first son so she had to choose work that was like supporting of us um, but now by doing this project, it's like I've shunned the light on her. She's not done this for over 20 years and her work is amazing. I love it. Like, and you know, I never forget like finding her portfolio in the attic, like a couple of years ago for the first time while I was in between you. And I was like, why have I never seen this? Like this was, a, this would have impacted me so much earlier on, uh, earlier on if I'd seen this, but actually it doesn't matter because it's impacting me now. And to just have that, that ability to just even just shine a light on my mom and her talent that hasn't been seen for so long you know it's just so rewarding you know it's really it's really really rewarding especially because you're in a position now where you can like you've learned so much yeah. you're still 23 but you've been through so much that 
it, like it should yeah. be sh- like shared your experience should be shared as with so many other creative people not had an easy life I've not had a terrible life don't get me wrong I'm not not trying to pull the violins out here but like you know I've definitely had a challenging life but I've also had a really enriched life considering where I'm from you know I I I feel so lucky um that that I've had people along the way like spot my passion and talent and thought we need to give this kid a go do you know what I mean I've been really 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 lucky because if I hadn't have done that I wouldn't be where I am now 100 million percent you know I think so lots to be proud of and I, and I love that you're actually sharing it now and helping other people I think that's really important but thank you I hope to do I hope to do that for the rest of my career like you know I, I'm so inspired by like you know designers like McQueen who've set up like you know Sarah Bande Foundation and you know I like from the get-go like I would I've always said that if I was to get that you know um respected and I don't want to use the word famous because I, I really don't like that term but like just I mean well I don't mind it but like I don't want to be famous just because like, I've been on Love Island kissing some guy like do you know what I mean like I want to be you know I want to be like known for my work and I want to be known for like who I am and the positive things I do within my cre- creativity I don't want to be known for shit but like things that I've done in a nightclub or whatever do you know what I mean like um but yeah, like I've always been really inspired by like how people have used their like growth to inspire and like support other people. Like I was a hundred percent like to set up a foundation at some point that supports other people like myself. Like, and I, I just feel like that it will be like one of the most positive things I'll do in my life. You know, I'd love to. I would love to do that. That would be like that. That would be life well made if I was to like leave a legacy of something like that. You know. Yeah. 